American troops in Panama ransack a diplomat's residence. Screw up, uh, and they have expressed their regrets that it took place. In Jerusalem, those demonstrating for peace get a less than peaceful reaction. And a man who's changed the face of the world and the face of the future. This is NBC Nightly News, reported by Garrick Utley. Good evening, I'm Catherine Couric. Garrick Utley is off tonight. A search of the Nicaraguan ambassador's home in Panama has created a politically sticky situation for the United States. Officials here are making apologies. President Bush called it a screw-up. Meanwhile, Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega is making noise and taking action. NBC's Dan Molina reports from Panama. Nicaraguan ambassador's residence in Panama City clearly displays a Nicaraguan insignia, one that neighbors say has been there for months. Nonetheless, some 30 U.S. troops forced their way into the house and searched it. They apparently ignored all the evidence that the home might be protected by diplomatic immunity, including personal assurances from Nicaragua's ambassador. A spokesman for U.S. forces says they did turn up a sizable cache of weapons. Anti-tank weapons, four Uzis, machetes, um, a variety of magazines, small weapons, uh, large amounts of ammunition, uh, 11 AK-47s. In Nicaragua, an outraged Daniel Ortega called the treatment of his ambassador and the violation of diplomatic protocol provocative and insulting. The Sandinista forces surrounding the United States Embassy in Managua were placed on stepped-up alert. Top Nicaraguan officers were called back from year-end holidays. Twenty American diplomats were expelled from the country. Alejandro Bendaña is the spokesman for Nicaragua's foreign ministry. Overrunning a country is, is barbaric enough, but overrunning a foreign diplomatic mission is something that is equally outrageous in the context of international law. President Bush, relaxing today in Houston, made it clear that he felt the size of the arms cache was suspiciously large. But reacting to Nicaragua's anger, the president criticized the conduct of U.S. troops. The colonel down there expressed regret, uh, in spite of the fact they found AK-47s and rocket launchers and automatic machine guns. That shouldn't have happened, and that has been explained to the Nicaraguans. Uh, and. Uh, screw up uh, and they have expressed their regrets that it took place and I, I'd like to know what the man's doing with rocket launchers and grenades and Uzis and, and uh, automatic weapons up to his eyeballs in his house. Developments were a bit brighter. The newly installed president Guillermo Indara made his first appearance in the presidential palace. One more sign that the country is beginning to re-stabilize its political institutions. At the Vatican Embassy, there seemed to be more activity today, more helicopters coming and going, and an increase in the number of American troops on hand. This statement was issued by the bishops of Panama. It's the text of a letter to the Pope asking him to end the standoff by turning Manuel Noriega over to the government of Panama. The speakers, which had been blaring loud music to harass Noriega, were silent today, apparently in response to Rome's anger at the tactic. President Bush acknowledged... Some screw-up with the Nicaraguan ambassador isn't the only substantial lapse here of the last couple of days. A senior U.S. embassy official now says that Michael Harari, the former Israeli intelligence officer who was then a top advisor to Noriega, is not in the hands of U.S. forces as had been declared earlier. He says they goofed. They had the wrong man. Dan Molina, NBC News, Panama City. The Soviet news agency TASS reports that the Bishops' Conference of Panama says the Catholic Church will hand over Manuel Noriega shortly. The deposed dictator was given sanctuary in the Vatican Embassy in Panama City on Christmas Eve. A representative of the Bishops' Conference told NBC News he knows nothing about the report. A protest for peace in Jerusalem met with aggressive resistance from Israeli authorities today. 15 to 20,000 Israelis, Palestinians and foreigners formed a human chain around Jerusalem's old city. They came together to protest Israel's policies towards the Palestinians in the occupied territories. But when some of the protesters began chanting anti-Israeli and pro-Palestinian songs and slogans, police moved in fast, using tear gas, rubber bullets, clubs, and water cannons. Many in the crowd were overcome by tear gas. The Israeli police commissioner who directed the officers said their actions were warranted because they'd been hit by rocks. Many involved say they've never witnessed such a violent reaction by police on civilians. 
Northwest Airlines Flight 51, the target of a bomb threat last week, landed in Detroit this afternoon about an hour late, but in one piece. More than 100 of the 130 people who were to have taken the flight canceled their reservations. When it landed in Detroit today, there were only 28 passengers aboard, and three of them were reporters. Coming up, NBC's George Lewis on Romania. Much of the country's history may have to be rewritten.